How are you? Welcome to my DIY channel. If we are just meeting, my name is Kathy. This is my puppy Coco and it's my DIY. We do a lot of great projects on the budget here. Uh, and almost every time I record a video, I get a question about my eat sign. Did I make it? Do I have a DIY about it? Well, this was actually a gift from my sister for a housewarming but I'll be happy to finally recreate it for you. So let's get started. So here's a closer look at my sign. It gives my kitchen that vintage farmhouse feel and I constantly get compliments about it. I was able to find a similar sign online for $30. I'm gonna show you how to recreate it for about five, six dollars. How about that? <laughs> And I just checked on YouTube and it looks like my friend Kristen K had made a similar sign like this before. Uh, well, I'm still gonna make one for you since you're asking and I'm gonna link Kristen's channel in my description box so you can go and check out her version as well. This one is gonna be a little different because it's gonna be one piece versus three separate paddles. For the supplies, you're gonna need three cutting boards from Dollar Tree wooden letters from Walmart and I really like these because they're already distressed and done for you and uh, they're only a dollar a piece. Also we're gonna use a piece of one cookie sheet and you get two for a dollar at a dollar tree. We also gonna need paint mixing sticks. I got mine at Home Depot. You can also find them at Walmart. The small ones are free. The longer one I think um, was like three for a dollar, so real cheap. In addition, you're gonna need some jute string and paint, whatever paint you can find. Walmart sells apple barrel paints for only 50 cents a bottle. Use what you have at home. If you have any spray paint, that's great too. We're gonna need brown, gray, and white. I happen to have a little bit of cream and gray spray paint. So I'm gonna do two paddles that way. So while that dries, we're gonna work on the galvanized letter. You probably noticed that my sign has a galvanized A. So I'm gonna use the wooden letter just as a stencil. And uh, I outline it with my pen. Pen, pen, pencil, whatever you can, and then cut it out. And as you probably noticed, yes, I am using a letter V upside down. Walmart ran out of A's, so I'm improvising over here. <laughs> it still works, right? Next, I am smoothing out the indentations from the cookie sheet. And as I learned, since you rub the aluminum, you get the silver on your fingers and your table. <laughs> so just watch out, guys, a little bit messy over here. Next, we're gonna fold the letter to get that corrugated metal look. So you fold it, turn it over, fold it over again, and back and forth, all the way down. So you fold both legs until you get one flat piece. Next, as you pull it and unfold, you're gonna achieve that nice corrugated metal look.
pretty easy, right? Uh, a corrugated metal letter like this cost $3 at Hobby Lobby. It was actually on sale for $1.49, but it's out of stock and sold out now. So you can imagine how many of these letters we can make for just 50 cents out of one uh, cookie sheet. Uh, possibilities are endless for farmhouse decor. You can cut out farmhouse animals, windmills, anything you like. So I'm very excited to share that technique with you. The only thing is, as I'm looking at this letter now, it looks a little bit uh, chunky, maybe too heavy for my sign. I decide to print another letter on my computer. Here's the font uh, name, Bakerville Old Face, size 350. It's a thinner font. Let me try that one now. So I taped the printout to my cookie sheet and I'm gonna use it as an outline. So I go around the edges just like I did with the wooden letter except here I'm saving a dollar. So you might wanna do that and not buy the A letter at all, just print one on your computer. When you lift up your paper, you can cut it out in a small piece, easier to manage. And here your letter is very visible for you to cut it out. I think it would be also easier to use your smaller detail scissors for this, just because this letter is so skinny and you know, you wanna cut out every angle right over here. But I think it came out very cute and I like it better than the chunky letter. So I'm gonna use this one. I'm just smoothing it out a little bit and I wanna give it that corrugated look like with the other letter. And I have a stick here from Starbucks. Uh, I use it a little bit to help me with the straight line. And this is obviously more meticulous work than with the chunky letter, <laughs> and, but it's still doable and I think it's well worth the effort. And don't expect uh, such a precision from me because believe me, I'm not a perfectionist. And uh, let's see what we came up with. <laughs> We have to be a little more careful as we pull apart that skinny letter because we don't want to break off the leg and have to do all that work all over again. Yes, I think we did good. This is cute, right? I definitely like it better than the chunky letter. This is the one we're going to use on our paddle. Speaking of which, let's do some painting. We have to paint the brown one. And I'm just using a dry brush from Dollar Tree and some brown paint that I have on hand. Make sure you paint around the edges because it will be visible around the handle and the little hole. You see dry brushing is great because it leaves strokes like wood grains. Oh, no, 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 Coco, this is not for you. <laughs> what, you want some highlights, low lights? <laughs> I know we all have messy hair right now. You have to deal with it. <laughs> and I am messing here with some gray paint as well. I just wanna give a little bit more dimension, um, a little bit different wood tone, <laughs> if I may say. Don't be afraid just to play around. And uh, what's the worst you, uh, that could happen? You're just gonna paint it over again. And just make sure you go in the up and down movement uh, to achieve that uh, wood grain look, okay? And we're gonna finish this off with a few strokes of the dark brown paint. Right, let's leave it out to dry and let's work on the gray one. It just dried and you see spray paint left it shiny. I don't think I like it. I wanna give it the same wood look like the brown one. 
So I'm just going to dry brush the light gray paint that I used before. I think this is good. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, and the last one. Uh, this one was spray painted with a cream chalk paint. Uh, it's much better because it left a matte finish, but still just one dimensional. So I decided to dry brush some white paint on top of it to make it look nice and consistent with the rest of them. Here's the look at the transformation. I don't think they look like the cheap plastic Dollar Tree cutting boards anymore, right? <laughs> I love it. And now to connect these together, we're going to use paint steering sticks. Uh, this one is too long, so I'm going to have to cut it to size. And this is how we're going to set these up. Uh, the one in the middle is about an inch and a half taller than the other two. So just measure on both sides. Mark it and measure twice to make sure everything's even before you add a lot of hot glue to your stick and press it firmly on top of your boards. At first I was upset I didn't have two long sticks at home, but you know what? It still came out nice and sturdy. And just like that, we have a nice one piece wall decor. And in order to be able to hang it on the wall, we're going to use a floral wire. Just cut a piece uh, wide enough, stretch it from one side to the other, use a lot of hot glue, and of course, when you need a lot, you always run out of your glue stick, <laughs> and tap it with a little band-aid, like I like to call it, actually a piece of a ribbon, and do that on both sides. And it's going to be, I promise you, nice and sturdy. You see what I mean? A cheap way to hang your pictures. <laughs> Next, you're going to use your ruler to center the letters on the cutting boards. If you're going to use the same letters from Walmart like I did, it's going to be an inch and a half on each side. And simply attach each letter with a lot of hot glue. And the letter T is going to be on the same level as letter E. But to center it horizontally, we're going to use the bottom of the letter, right? Flip it upside down and then add a lot of hot glue once you are ready. The letter A is obviously a little higher, but we're still going to use the width of the ruler uh, to align it there and center in the middle. Very good. And now the cherry on the top, we're going to add some jute strength around each handle. Simply add a drop of hot glue in the back and wrap with the jute strength about 10 times. So the handle is curved, so make sure you keep pushing the jute strength down so you don't leave any spacing in between. Looking good. Now you can add a drop of hot glue in the back and cut it off.
you repeat the same process on the second petal, except you might want to measure to make sure you start at the same point. All right, one more cherry and we are done. Are you ready to see the final result? <laughs> so what do you think? Did we do it justice? The letters in the original piece are a little bit more darker, but I didn't want to mess with mine because I like the design that was already on them. Of course, if you prefer a darker tone, more rustic, you can do that. my besties so this is it for today thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel i have many more other great ideas for you on a budget so see you next time take care bye bye She knows I was photographing the bow, so now she's like, no, no, I'm not going to pose in the bow, no, no, I'm not going to pose in the bow. Mm -mm. Little stubborn little dog, look what she's doing. Coco, fix your ear. <laughs>